I'm Effie and in this video I'm going to be tier ranking and also doing a slight wrap up of the books that I read in November and the first couple of weeks of December. So the reason that I'm merging these two is at a certain point in December I stop reading new titles for the year so that I can have my end of year content go out this side of the new year. So any books that I'm reading from this point onwards are going to be rereads and I've not been covering rereads at all in these tier rankings so I can make this video today. The reason it's going to be a wrap up is originally I'd planned for this to be two separate videos but then I realised that the vast majority of the books that I'm talking about in this video I've already talked about in other videos because the majority of the books I read for the Goodreads Choice Awards and there's a dedicated video on those books. So I'm mostly going to be wrapping up books that I haven't talked about in other videos. I hope that's okay. I will try and make this a relatively svelte video but I guess we'll just see how it goes. So without much further ado let's get into the video. So just a reminder because it's probably only been like two days since you last saw one of my tier rankings but it's been a couple of weeks since I last did a tier ranking I think. So our categories from best to worst are love this book and look forward to treasuring it for years to come. That's not quite what it's called but we'll go with that. Um, impeccable vibes slash good in the moment. A deeply mid book if you can't say anything nice and eat it out of the window into a barbecue during an apocalypse. So let's just get crack a lacking. So first up we have The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. So I read this for the Goodreads Choice Awards. The big thing is, right, this book so heavy on the um, adult minor relationship vibes which is <laughs> you know um so that is very clearly going in the bottom category Clytemestra, i think impeccable vibes slash good in the moment i hoped for a bit more but i did like the women's wrongs vibes tress uh i'm gonna have to say yeet out the window i had such a hard time reading this book i think the concept was great the execution not so great bookshops and bone dust i think if you can't say anything nice yeah like i liked satchel but beyond that it just i, I guess you have to be in the mood for cozy and i wasn't in the mood for cozy and i just couldn't um the bullet that missed love this book there's something about the thursday murder club books that just work for me i do think <sighs> It's difficult to say because there's characters that are reading very queer and I feel like every time we get an additional book it's almost like leaning into the queerness and like please do not tell me in the comments because I have not read book four and won't get a chance to read book four until next year now but like I, I kind of need it to stop baiting me but I also get that these are older characters with you know they've lived their lives and if they've been in the closet for a while then they may take a while to get to that point but I just I love these books so much and they're just a joy to read and I particularly enjoy the audiobooks they just they make me feel at home the invocations I'm going to say impeccable vibes like I did enjoy it I think it was saying a lot of good things I mean unfortunately there's a kind of trend of books that have this kind of vibe at the moment and also weirdly I kind of wanted it to go further I wanted it to go darker but it was really good and I think it's left the door cracked for there to be a sequel um have I told you what any of the books are? I don't know. So The Invocations is like a witchy book where women are able to make pacts with demons, kind of. Like, I, 
it's a little unclear what these entities actually are but they're able to make pacts in order to get specific powers um, per the terms of their pacts but then someone is killing them so it's kind of like a murder mystery but you're also learning more about these powers and stuff i went into it a bit hesitant because there's like clear a clear sort of gender binary with it it does have a kind of throwaway line that the magic system is very much trans inclusive um people beyond the binary are not really acknowledged but sort of reading between the lines like it's kind of inclusive of that as well so pretty pretty decent but wanted it to go a little bit further and also unfortunately i seem to have read a number of books with this kind of theme of late so it didn't quite work for me stoneblind i am gonna go with impeccable vibes like i think it's very hard for a medusa book to live up to what jesse burton put forward in medusa like stoneblind's so good so unique but i think i wanted just a hair more but really enjoyed it ninth house i'm gonna actually put in love this book i zoomed through it and had such a good time could not predict where it was going i liked the conversations it was having overall fantastic time with it but then hellbent i'm gonna say deeply mid and i don't know if it was that it was one of the last books i read for the goodreads choice awards and that's why it didn't hit i don't know if it was that the audio book didn't work for me but it just didn't quite click unfortunately the final empire um, i'm gonna go with impeccable vibes i think the conclusion was a bit too neat the fight scenes didn't work for me which reduced the emotional impact of some of the big big things but it was a very compulsive read i ended up having it in three different formats because i needed it at all times i needed the audiobook whilst i was doing other things i needed the ebook so i could read it at bedtime like i had the physical book as well i just had to keep reading and it's so good so interesting but it just fell a little bit flat at the end but i'm also very interested to see where the story goes next and look forward to picking up the next book in the series next year an affinity for formaldehyde i'm gonna go with impeccable vibes so this is a book that's like quirky dark horror kind of horror is dark by its nature is it not i don't know um essentially a queer woman returns to her hometown to be told by her best friend that he wants to marry her grandmother so like 50 year age gap they go around and the grandmother's like yeah i um i want to steal your body so that i can have babies with your best friend so it's like <laughs> you know it's it's pushing the limits but also it's that interesting kind of quirky horror and you know whilst everything the grandmother's saying is awful she commits so many crimes it's so kind of satisfying for it to be so unhinged and also like shout out to chloe spencer the author so you know a lot of authors put out um arc sign ups and i'd had my eye on this book for for a minute i was looking forward to it coming out and then for some reason like my instagram didn't tell me when the arc sign ups was and i missed it by a couple of days and i made a comment like oh so sad i missed it um you know i'll wait until next year and the author reached out to me and was like um I i'm happy to send you across an arc and i was like kind of mind blown and yeah i had such a good time with this book i do like i think i wanted it to go a tiny bit further but like it already went really far and the ending slapped like oh 
good times. I Feed Her to the Beast and the Beast is Me by Jameson Shay. I have a video where I read this, Mr. Magic and New Adult. The video, I believe, is coming out on Boxing Day. So for the moment, all I'm going to say about this book is impeccable vibes. Mr. Magic, um, eat it out the window. Again, I have a video coming out on Boxing Day, Tuesday the 26th. So if you're seeing this video after that, it will hopefully be linked in the description. But if you're not, uh, subscribe to check that video out. Inkbud says subscribe, I think. I'm going to go for good in the moment because I did enjoy it as I was reading it. I think it was saying some interesting things. Um, it just didn't wow me. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. This kind of came out of less left field in a way because I didn't expect to love it as much as I did and I really, really did. Heartstopper Volume 5. Love this book. I I really, really love the Heartstopper books and this one got, like, it just, it got me in all of the feels and I look forward to kind of rereading it and rereading it and rereading it like it truly is a book that I'm going to be rereading a lot over the course of the next few years and I can't believe there's only one more volume to come and then that will be the Heartstopper story over like I know we've got the Nick and Charlie novella I know we've got this winter like there's a few additional things that I'm waiting until I've read volume six to read but it, it's kind of sad that it's coming to an end at some point in the near future. Venko, I'm going to say like impeccable vibes. It took me by, oops, that's gone in the wrong category. It took me by surprise. I didn't expect to love it as much as I did. And I just had such a good time with it. I liked the way the magic system worked. And I'm hoping there's going to be a sequel. It definitely left um, quite a large door open for there to be a sequel. But also, it was quite satisfying in what we got in its own right. Day of Fall and Night was just pure good vibes. And was pretty much the reason this category um, existed. Because I could not tell you anything about anything that happened in the book. But I loved being on the journey. I loved following these characters for years on end. I loved seeing their triumphs, their failures. I just, I really enjoy these books. Um, new Adult, I'm going to put in Yeet and leave it at that. Um, Salmon Rushdie, Victory City. I I really love this book as well. Like I think the market's so saturated with Greek mythology that it was refreshing to see in Indian mythology. And this was such a well-written book and so biting in places of its social commentary I just oh I, I really really had a good time with Victory City The Will of the Many again I loved it did not expect to love this one because I hadn't read anything from James Islington before and I wasn't sure if it was going to be too kind of macho fantasy like I do think there's a there's a deficit of female characters in this story but I also think it's a very well-constructed fantasy world. It left my brain a bit frazzled at the end, but I'm excited to see where the story takes us and we'll definitely be looking out for the sequel when that comes out. The Unmaking of Doom Farrow. I'm just going to say if you can't say anything nice. <sighs> I just... It just didn't stand out for me and I don't get the hype, but that's fine. Starling House, I devoured. And I'm going to say love this book because I just could not c stop listening to it. And it's got that perfect dark whimsy that I love so much. Atalanta, I'm going to say if you can't say anything nice. It was a very basic, kind of boring Greek mythology. And I just, we don't need you know every single greek mythology story like i'm still a fan of things like hades and persephone but 
I don't need to know Atalanta's story. You know, it's just... Nah. Nah. Which, again, again, if you can't say anything nice. But in the case of this one, whilst I have technically read it, I could tell you literally nothing about it. It just did not compute in my brain. Nothing went in. And I'm hoping on reread I pick more stuff up, but it just didn't work for me. Um, Swordcatcher. Oh, this is a difficult one. Like, it was kind of mid, kind of. I'm actually going to put it in if you can't say anything nice because I felt like I was forcing myself to read it and it wasn't really bringing very much to the table. I also had kind of high hopes because this had been billed as, you know, Cat Cassie Clare's adult debut and it just kind of read like any other Cassie Clare, which is fine. And I mean, ultimately, like, it's it's just a Cassie Clare, like, you get what you expect from Cassie Clare, but for some reason, I went in with higher expectations and obviously it didn't meet those expectations because it never was going to be because it's not going to magically be some other author's work. Dracula, um, you know what? I'm going to put in good in the moment because it is goofy as anything and like it's very much of the time where it's like man brain better than woman brain and like the way that it ended was so silly but like it was so fitting with the rest of the book just being goofy as anything also the accents are somewhat questionable by some of the voice actors because I listened to the audible production with like Tim Curry, um, Alan Cumming, etc. And some of the voice actors are very, very questionable. Like the way that clearly the actors didn't consult with one another about how they were going to portray Van Helsing. So he's got a different accent depending on who was voicing him. There was some also some very questionable accents that I could not point where in the country they were meant to be from. But like overall, it actually, I had a fun time listening to it and exploring it. A Diary of Blood, I, I don't know. I think I'm going to put in Impeccable Vibes. It wasn't what I expected, but I think that's because I went in with the wrong kind of expectations for this story. I was expecting it to be something that it was never setting out to be. Like I read it without reading the blurb because I was like, oh, I just... I want to see what it is because this is what I think it's going to be. And like, that, that was never going to work. But I do think it was very satisfying. I also enjoyed the um, extended epilogue. The, I can't remember what it's called. Is it an encore of roses? I really enjoyed that as well. And I think it's going to be a very different experience on reread actually knowing what the book's about and what to expect. I also really enjoyed the like brief mention of the Harkers. I thought that was really funny. The Shadow Cabinet... Oh, I'm... I don't know, because on one hand, like, I did like what it was doing. It's just unfortunately very much like the Invocations. It's a story that I'm kind of tired of. Mm, I'm I'm going to have to put it in impeccable vibes because if I'm putting it, the invocations in that tier, it's only right that I also put the shadow cabinet. So this is the sequel to Her Majesty's Royal Coven and I can't really say anything more about it because massive spoilers. But yeah, it it's touching on what seems to be a kind of trend in fantasy at the moment but I did like some of the twists and turns and I'm definitely interested to see where the third book's gonna go and just overall a good time. Fallen Thorns are gonna have to put this in the top category and it broke my heart and I love they broke my heart but also it was so heartbreaking like I don't think you're prepared so this book comes out next month at the end of next month and I don't think you're prepared for the level of emotional damage this book will give you. So it's 
billed as Dark Academia set in Britain with vampires. Our main character is Arrow Ace. So it's a little bit of a coming of age, coming out story where a character is kind of coming to terms with their Arrow Ace identity, but they also have been turned into a vampire. There's a murderer in the city. There's also lots of creepy goings on and we're not quite sure what's going on. I think if you read this book looking at it as a vampire story, like vampires are very much part of the story, but I think don't go in looking for a vampire story, if that makes sense. This book felt a lot more like a sort of paranormal murder mystery with an element of representation for Ace Arrow people and neurodivergent people. I really enjoyed the way that Arlo, our main character's touch version, was portrayed. And I'm very excited to see other people speak about it. I'm also very excited to see everyone's heart break with this book. And we have finally gotten to the end. Okay, so that is every single book that I have read in 2023 because we're not um, touching the rereads because those are for me and me alone unless I specifically decide otherwise but that is everything that I read in 2023 tier ranked I do have a couple more videos coming out before we get into the true end of year content of best and worst etc but keep your eyes peeled because they are coming and I'm very excited to share them but until next time which should be tomorrow love you Bye.